Um, I was a manager for about seven years, ran several, several cornerstone and flagship locations in the Bay Area. And then about six years ago, I got promoted into talent acquisition. So in my role now, um, I oversee all the hiring for the South Bay Territory, which is comprised of all our locations in the South Bay. Um, and I also hire for Monterey County, Santa Cruz County, um, as well as our locations in Fremont. So that's uh, my career history in a nutshell and how I ended up getting into talent acquisition. Wonderful, Stacey. But thank you so much for sharing a bit about your background and how you got started with Enterprise. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Go ahead, Lisa. Oh. Um, I can oh, you, you're muted. Lisa, I think you're muted. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, so I wanted to let everybody know that this session is being recorded and we will post the recording on the Career Center's YouTube channel. So that way you can take a look at the video at any time that uh, you feel the need to look at it, okay? Um, so sorry about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so many students worry about finding internships and jobs in the economy and environment. Uh, what are your top tips for job internship search during these challenging times? That's a great question. Well, the first thing I'd like to tell you all today is really to not feel discouraged. Um, looking for a job in these uncertain times you know, is, is definitely a job in and of itself, right? Um, so I think it's really important to, you know, stay disciplined, right? And make sure you dedicate time each week, you know, to do your search. Um, I know that the job market right now is really competitive. Um, so if you can't find anything in the field that you're interested in, have an open mind, right? You know, maybe take an online class to develop, you know, new hard skills, maybe like an Excel. I know LinkedIn is offering a lot of free courses right now. Um, or look into companies that are hiring, you know, even though they might not be in the field that you want to get into, right? But maybe you can gain some new skills from those roles and be even better prepared and qualified um, for opportunities in that ideal industry later on down the line. I think the other thing is, you know, go volunteer, right? A lot of companies out there, you know, like to see volunteer experience on a resume, right? And, and from my seat, right, if I'm interviewing candidates, um, you know, and I see red flags in the resume, like, you know, gaps in employment, right? I'd be more inclined to move someone further along the interview process that took the time to develop new skills you know, rather than someone telling me they were just at home because it was really hard to find a job. So that's my advice on that. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing, Stacey. Okay, so for our next question is, can you explain what to expect from a socially distanced internship? Yeah, actually, before we answer that question, we actually have a few questions that have come in from students. Okay, yeah. um, Stacey, if you don't mind um, answering them, so one question is, what is the requirements to be accepted to enterprise? That's a great question. And I'm actually going to be covering that um, when I talk about the opportunities later on in the end. So we'll talk about um, what the requirements are for either the internship or the full-time positions that we're hiring for right now. Perfect. Yeah, the second question does relate to um, what roles enterprise is hiring for. So we will get to that towards um, later on in this uh, segment. So thank you for your questions, students. Keep them coming through. Um, okay, Evelyn, go ahead and go on to the next question. Yeah, great, thanks, Lisa. So Stacy, can you explain what to expect from a socially distanced internship? Okay, yeah, that's also a great question. And um, I can pretty much just speak to, you know, our internships that we're hiring for right now. Um, we're obviously a retail business. Uh, we've stayed open throughout the pandemic because we're obviously an essential provider. 
Um, with that being said, our interns are going to be working on, at a rental branch, you know, with a team, um, but obviously with, with safety measures in place, right? Our, our number one priority is, is the safety and well-being of, you know, our employees, accounts, and, and business partners and customers. Um, we're also following guidelines from the CDC. So, you know, before employees are going to work each morning, we're have their, having their temperature taken. Um, employees are, you know, required to wear a mask to work. Um, we've reconfigured our locations to allow for social distancing. Um, also, uh, frequently sanitizing high touch services throughout the day, keyboards, phones, countertops, things of that nature. Um, as far as the training things go, um, you know, it's a lot of hands-on training. Uh, we do have days of development for our interns. Um, typically those are done in person, you know, pre-COVID, but, you know, to adapt to the current situation now, we are doing some of those trainings virtually. So, you know, we give our employees the opportunity to do those days of development at home or, you know, they can use the manager's office because, you know, we've installed cameras at all our, our locations. Um, and then from a customer standpoint, right, um, obviously customer expectations have shifted more towards like contact. Oh, Stacy, I think you're, you're muted. I'm so sorry. Where did I get cut off? Um, like probably like two seconds ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Just continue. Um, okay. Um, you know, just from a customer standpoint, you know, customer expectations have obviously shifted more towards wanting contactless methods. Um, our company has always been looking at ways to enhance the customer experience. So, you know, our CEO implemented um, what's called a low touch, no touch model, which uh, it streamlines the rental car process to allow for a safer, safer and faster experience um, for our employees and customers. Great, that's wonderful. I love that like low touch, no touch um, kind mm -hmm. of motto, which really limits like um, any spread of like contaminants and helps everybody stay safe. I appreciate right. that. Let's Stacey, move on to we the next. have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Lisa. Uh, yeah, Stacy, we have a question that just came in uh, what ensures a safer and faster experience? Uh, from a customer standpoint? Is that- Varun? Varun? Is that from a customer standpoint? Customer and employee. So I pretty much touched on, you know, the safety protocols we have for employees with masks and social distancing and things like that. Um, but from a customer standpoint, um, we obviously want to make sure our customers feel safe in our vehicles. So we have implemented what's called like a complete clean car pledge. You know, clean vehicles has also always been our number one priority, but you know, we've taken further steps to ensure that our cars are, you know, clean, disinfected and sanitized. Um, we're also doing, um, you know, curbside service. So, you know, doing, you know, the rental car process outside making sure that customers are social distance, you know, if there ever is a line, right? Um, as far as a low, low touch, no touch approach, you know, we give our customers the opportunity, right, to, you know, if they have a reservation, enter their information in our system um, before coming into the branch and putting in their payment method in before they come into the branch. So by the time they get to the location, it's very minimal contact with an employee. They can get right in their car, feel more at ease, safe, and then get on the road. So um, those are the, some of the measures we're, we put in place from you know, customer and employee standpoint. Thanks. And also thanks to Varun for asking that great question. Okay, moving on, Lisa. Okay, uh, so Stacy, what are your top resume tips and are cover letters still relevant? Okay, yeah, that's another great question. So, you know, recruiters look at hundreds of resumes, right? And so when you think about that, you know, they don't spend very much time reviewing a resume. And I will tell you the average time a recruiter spends is about 10 seconds um, looking at a resume. So with that, 
Um, first tip is to really keep your resume um, simple and easy to read. Um, I recommend keeping it to one page. Um, there's no need to use any fancy resume templates or fancy fonts. Um, nothing wrong with fancy resume templates, um, but I think for those, it would be more beneficial for, you know, maybe someone applying to a graphic design role, you know, or a web design position where, you know, they'll need to showcase their creative skills. Um, second tip I think is really important is to make sure that you include keywords on your resume, right? And you can figure out what the keywords are by doing research on the company um, and reviewing the job description to you know, include those keywords on there. Um, there are a lot of companies using automated applicant tracking systems to scan hundreds of resumes uh, for one position. Um, and if your resume doesn't include those keywords uh, from the job description, uh, it might not make it to the yes pile and just end up falling to the cracks. Um, so I would hate for that to be a reason why, you know, you end up not getting an interview. Other tip is to really make sure that you tailor your resume to the job that you're going to be applying for. Um, you really can't have a one size fits all resume. Um, you're going to need to make sure that all your skills and experiences align with the job requirements. Um, and just to give you an example, um, back when we were doing career fairs in person, you know, I met with a student that was, you know, really interested in our full-time management training opportunity. Um, he gave me his resume. And the first thing I looked at was his objective, right? And his objective was to um, join the police academy. <laughs> um, so for me, you know, the fact that he didn't take time to update his resume was a red flag. Um, and I also questioned his sincere interest in the role. Um, so really make sure that you're tailoring your resume to the job. Um, and then you also wanna use um, accomplishment statements, right, uh, under your work experience and really use action verbs to start your accomplishment statements. Um, by using accomplishment statements, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a great way to demonstrate what's unique about you. Um, and you're also gonna be providing proof of the value that you're gonna bring to you know, a prospective employer. Um, you know, a lot of the times I just see duties and responsibilities listed, listed as bullets um, on a resume. And I, I think you're just taking up valuable space by doing that. Because for the most part, hiring managers are gonna know what, what duties are associated with your job titles. Um, and then the way you can you know, put together accomplishment statements is you know, by using the STAR method. And I'll actually talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and then you talked about cover letters. Uh, for me, um, you know, we don't require cover letters when you're applying to any of our positions. Um, some recruiters are probably gonna tell you that if you wanna show off your writing skills um, and maybe explain your motivation to join the company, you know, it would be good to do a cover letter or maybe if you wanna address red flags that are on your resume, um, like changing industries or employment gaps, um, it would be good to explain those as well on a cover letter. Wonderful, thanks Stacy. So I went ahead and popped in some tips in the chat for your resume and cover letter. If any students have any following questions, but I do see Ella um, did ask a question uh, regarding to her resume. She asks, how to, how to align my resume if I'm applying to or for a completely different role if my job experience does not match the current requirements? Um, I think, you know, if you're involved in student organizations or clubs or maybe have volunteered and you can draw, you know, some examples that from those experiences that align with the job, um, that might work to your advantage. Um, or maybe, you know, successes, successes that you've had from class projects could help as well. It doesn't always necessarily have to be from your work experience. So I don't know if there's anything you wanna to add to that, Lynn or, or Lisa. 
Yeah, I mean, when you're definitely crafting your resume or your cover letter, you always want to make sure you relate what's the contents of your resume back to your main objective. Um, and that's, uh, that's always um, something that you want to go ahead and do. And like I mentioned before, I did include some resume tips uh, for everyone, as well as the cover letter help through um, the SJSU Career Center. So it's linked in the chat if you want to check that out. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Um, okay, oh, sorry, I think I went back. Um, students know networking is important, but they are not sure how to do it well. Please give us your advice on how to best network in a virtual environment. Awesome. Well, you know, I, I think it's really important for you to be able to step out of your comfort zone, you know, and just put yourself out there. Um, you know, if you don't know where to start, you know, tap into your existing network, right? And, you know, maybe think about who you've met through previous jobs you've had or who you know from, you know, student clubs or organizations that you're involved in. Um, if you're an athlete, maybe, maybe you're, you know, current or former teammates, right? Or maybe old professors, right? And set up virtual coffee chats with them. Um, share your professional goals so that they can help you make connections with other people. Um, I also think it'd be a good idea to uh, reach out to recruiters um, on LinkedIn and, and ask for informational interviews. When you do that, um, you can use you know, your professional pitch, which is also known as an elevator pitch, um, so that you can introduce yourself in a compelling way, right? You don't want to email a recruiter and say, what positions do you have available for me? That's not what we want to hear, right? We want to know who you are, what you've done, right? And what you have to offer. Um, and then from there, right, if you're able to get an information session with a recruiter or hiring manager, you, you've got to be able to maintain that relationship. It's not just a one and done. Um, so maybe pick a time frame. Uh, like once a semester, um, you just want to make sure enough time has passed so that you can, you know, um, talk about new things that you could share, um, updates on things that they may have may have suggested for you um, from either your classes, projects, um, things like that. And then you can also ask new questions that may have come up. Um, in addition to that, I, I think it's really good to sign up for virtual career fairs on campus. Um, you're going to be able to network with employers and, and the fact that we're doing it virtually, that, you know, a lot more employers are going to be um, at these career fairs because um, it's more accessible. And then also joining more, more virtual workshops hosted by the Career Center um, would re really be a good idea to help you network. Um, and it's obviously a process. You're not going to be able to, you know, build your network overnight. Um, it's going to take time, right? Um, so just be patient and continue to follow up and, and don't give up on it. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Stacey. And if anybody is interested in any type of mentoring and meetups, the SJSU Cura Center offers a great resource for students called SJSU Squared where um, you can actually meet with mentors and have meetups uh, in a virtual space. I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the bio, in the chat. And then we can move on to the next question. Go ahead, Lisa. Thank you, Edlyn. So Stacy, talk to us about LinkedIn. What are your top tips and what should students not do? Okay. Uh, there's actually a lot of things that you can do to your profile. Um, that can enhance your visibility on LinkedIn. You know, tell your story. You know, have it act as a living and breathing um, electronic resume. Um, I'll share some best practices in my feed, um, and really what I look for when I'm looking for candidates on LinkedIn. Um, so, you know, obviously the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you have a complete profile. You know, take advantage of uh, the improve your profile. Yeah. profile completeness section um, and that's going to help you gauge how you're doing. I think it's uh, also important to make sure that you have a profile picture on LinkedIn. Um, make sure it's current, um, that it's good lighting, 
clear. And most importantly, it's professional. You don't want to crop photos from, you know, a wedding you're at or a party you attended. I mean, if you don't have like a professional headshot, um, that's okay. Have someone take a photo of you, you know, with professional attire on, you know, with a plain background. And most importantly, make sure that you smile uh, because you want your LinkedIn profile to be welcoming. Um, also, if you want to be more discoverable on LinkedIn um, by recruiters and hiring managers, you know, you want to make sure that you have a good, simple headline um, that's going to include keywords from the industry that you want to work for. Um, if you don't have prior work experience, you know, that's okay. Um, just don't make the mistake of, of putting, you know, for example, student at SGSU on your headline, because um, that's not going to help you stand out. We want to know who you are um, and what you're looking for um, and make sure to include more details, you know, in the summary. So just to give you an example, um, your headline could be something as simple as, you know, business administrator, business admin student seeking business to business sales internship. Right. And then when you think about your summary, uh, make sure that you use your elevator pitch. Your summary should be compelling and, you know, provide that snapshot of who you are, you know, what you've done, you know, like what contributions have you made from, you know, your previous experience and talk about what makes you awesome, right? Tailor it to the industry that you're in, interested in. Um, and then with the experience section, right, include as many accomplishments and achievements as possible. Um, as I mentioned er earlier, don't just list the duties and responsibilities you know, from your jobs, because, you know, that's not going to help you stand out. So those are my tips for LinkedIn. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. Perfect. Yeah, great tips. Yeah, yeah. and Stacey, um, there was, uh, Jennifer has a question for you. For designers, does requiring a portfolio password hurt your visibility? Did you say, does it hurt your visibility? Yes, that's correct. Um. I think, you know, for those specific roles, if you can add, you know, any of those things on your LinkedIn, I think it would benefit you. I mean, I can't really speak to that because that's not an, a position that I hire for, um, but I don't think it would hurt. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that, Edlin or Lisa. Yeah, I mean, um, I would definitely suggest if you do have any questions about industry specific questions, such as uh, your portfolio or like having a password protected portfolio, I would definitely suggest you meet with one of our career counselors. And if you don't know which one our career counselor is or who your career counselor is, we can go ahead and link that in the chat as well. So how to find your career counselor and how to schedule an appointment. So Jennifer, if you do have any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and link those um, um, things in the bio, I mean, in the chat. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself right there. Okay, Stacy, can you share with us how your organization supports diversity and inclusion in the hiring and development of employees of various backgrounds and experiences? That's definitely a great question. Our, our company values diversity and inclusion. And, uh, you know, one of our many guiding principles that we live by at Enterprise is that, you know, our doors are open right? Our workplace is so inclusive and, you know, I'm really lucky to work for a company where everyone can go to work and just be themselves. Um, you know, when you think about our employees, you know, our customers and our business partners, we truly embrace the differences that make everyone unique and successful. Um, our workplace is also very, very diverse. Um, so that brings a wide variety of skills, um, experiences, uh, perspectives and insights that are all recognized and respected. And so for me, being able to be, you know, a part of, you know, the important decision making at work and, you know, knowing that my input and perspectives are appreciated makes me really proud to say, right, that I'm not just an employee, right, but a true business partner that's, that's making a positive impact, you know, on the organization. Um, from a hiring standpoint, you know, we want to make sure that we hire a workforce that, that's going to mirror the communities where we do business. 
Um, so with that, we, we hire at local schools and, and partner with the career center, student organizations. Um, and we also partner with local community organizations so that we can recruit people from a wide variety of backgrounds. Um, from an employee development standpoint, um, we provide a structured way for employees to connect with their peers um, who share those similar backgrounds, life experiences, um, and, and interest through, you know, the local diversity teams and employee resource groups. Uh, we also provide, you know, formal coaching and mentorship programs to ensure that everyone has the resources to be successful at enterprise. Um, in 2020, our company introduced new diversity councils and forums um, to drive honest dialogue and, and, you know, on all the issues that we face. And then we have a company-wide diversity and inclusion trainings and webinars to promote the idea of open minds and open doors. Great, thank you. That's great, Stacey. Um, we have a student that was wondering if you guys hire international students, do you support for internships, OPT, CPT, um, and or sponsorship for full-time opportunities? Everyone is welcome to apply to our open positions. Um, I will just say that the only thing that we don't do is, is, is sponsor. Okay. But you provide um, support for OPT, CPT for internships. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the next, the last question. Lisa? Oh, okay. So Stacy, we get many questions about how to best navigate the interview process. Can you share tips for successful interviewing? Yeah, I'll share um, a couple tips. Um, so the first tip, which I think is really important, and I mentioned this earlier um, when we talked about resumes, is to make sure that you do your research on the company, right? To make sure that your skills and experiences align with the qualifications and that your career goals are gonna align with the company goals. Um, there's multiple resources available to you for your research. Um, you know, there's obviously the company website, um, you can utilize a career center to you to help you with your research, Google, LinkedIn, um, or maybe even your friends that have graduated to the work world. Um, it's also important um, to do research on yourself, um, really do a self-assessment, you know, take a look at all your experiences, you know, from, you know, your previous jobs, hobbies, um, you know, if you're involved in, in sports and figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, because those types of questions are going to be brought up in an interview, right? And if you're able to identify your weaknesses, you got to be able to put a positive spin on it. Um, so just know what those are. Um, it's also important to make a good impression in the interview. Um, a lot of us are doing interviews virtually right now. So make sure that you treat the virtual interviews as if it were in person. So dress professionally, right? Um, it's better to be overdressed than underdressed. And you wanna be careful of trends because you don't want what you're wearing to take away from what you're saying. Um, you know, with regards to virtual interviews, you know, be on time, right? I've done my fair share of virtual interviews. You know, we've been in this pandemic for almost a year now and, you know, a lot of technical difficulties arise. So make sure that you test your mic, you know, your speakers, and most importantly, your internet connection the day before so that when the interview starts, you're not encountering any of those problems. And it's, you know, you don't want any time taken away from your interview, you know, having to overcome those technical difficulties. Um, and the other thing I wanted to point out is, you know, be aware of what your surroundings are, right? If you don't have a home office, that's okay. Right, but I've done interviews where in the background I've seen an unmade bed or someone had to do an interview in their kitchen and dirty dishes were piled up in the sink. Um, I don't want what's in your background to, you know, be a distraction and take away from what you're saying. So, you know, just some things for you to be mindful of. And then uh, another tip is know how to answer interview questions. Right, at the start of the interview, um, recruiters are always gonna ask you, uh, the question, tell me about yourself, right? So be prepared with 
how to be able to answer those questions. Um, don't just regurgitate what's on your resume. Um, you want to be prepared to, you know, give a short, compelling story by using your elevator pitch, right? And that's how you're going to help sell yourself and set the tone for the interview. Um, we have your resumes in front of us, so, you know, no need to regurgitate what's on there. Um, the interview questions, you know, a lot of companies now are using the behavioral interview technique, you know, because we want to know how you behaved in situations in the past to determine how you're going to behave in uh, situations in a sim future situations in a similar role. Um, so when answering behavioral questions, um, you want to use a STAR method to help you tell the full story. Um, and you want to make sure you're drawing examples from your work experience. So the STAR method stands for situation, task, action, result. So when you're answering interview questions, you always want to tell the recruiter, you know, the situation that you were in, you know, what you were tasked with, what action steps that you took to resolve the issue, and most importantly, what the end result was. You want to make sure that it was a positive one, right? So just to give you an example of a behavioral question, you know, tell me about a time where you had to deal with an upset customer, right? Um, and so an example of a response to that could be, um, you know, while I worked with, at Target, you know, I dealt with a customer that, you know, was upset that we didn't have, you know, a certain item in stock. You know, I did X, Y, Z to resolve the issue. And that resulted in the customer leaving happy and uh, sending a compliment to my manager. So that kind of just gives you an example of what we're looking for. Um, and then after the interview questions, right, the recruiter is going to give you time to ask questions. So make sure that you have one or two questions ready for the recruiter, right, because that's just going to show your interest in the position. And then most importantly, send a follow up email. Um, and I would say it's good to send it within 24 to 48 hours after the interview. Um, obviously say thank you, but you want to personalize it, you know, by highlighting maybe a couple of things that you discussed in the interview and, you know, just reemphasize your excitement for the role. So those are just some of my tips, you know, when it comes to interviewing. Thank That's you great. so much, Stacey. Oh, we always um, love using that STAR method. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some of your opportunities, Stacey, if you wanted to go ahead and discuss. All right, so you can go ahead and talk about um, your open opportunity, Stacey. Great. Um, so I, I'm really excited to say that we do have opportunities available uh, right now, um, not only here in the Bay Area, but across the country. Um, I'll start with our management trainee position. And uh, the management trainee position is, is a full-time career opportunity. We do require a bachelor's degree for the role. Um, it's an entry-level position uh, where we're going to bring you in and uh, teach you how to run a business from the ground up, right? So you're going to be working at a rental branch and your managers are going to teach you um, how to be effective at sales, um, customer service, management, finance. You'll learn how to analyze like a P&L statement, right? You're going to learn a little bit about human resources and how to effectively train and develop employees. Um, you're going to learn how to be successful at marketing, right, and how to sell the enterprise difference to, you know, referral sources like, you know, body shops, insurance companies, um, dealerships, hotels, small businesses, things of that nature. Um, we're going to teach you fleet management and our company strictly promotes from within. Um, so I started in the management trainee position. Um, management trainees are typically in the role for you know, eight to 15 months. Um, you can get to assistant manager within, I would say year to year and a half and then become a branch manager right before you hit two years. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the career path on that in just a bit. Um, the other position that we're recruiting for is our management trainee internship opportunity. Um, we are, we do have a spring internship opportunity open right now where we're targeting May, 2021 grads. Um, it is part-time. And we also have our management trainee summer internship 
uh, which is gonna be full-time. Um, and it's a 10 to 12 week program. So for the internship opportunity, um, the responsibilities of an intern are gonna mirror that of a management trainee. So you're still gonna learn all aspects of running a business that I mentioned earlier, right? You're also gonna be able to apply, you know, what you've learned in your classes, um, you know, to a real professional, um, you know, organization. And not only that, you're gonna be able to gain marketable skills that are gonna help prepare you for, you know, a successful career after graduation. And hopefully you can, you know, convert to a full-time management trainee with us, but, you know, some of the skills, um, marketable skills that you're gonna gain will include, you know, communication, customer service, leadership, um, teamwork, public speaking, all those skills are valued by a lot of companies, right? And you're gonna be able to participate in contests and competitions uh, with other interns and you're truly an integral part of the team, right? A lot of the times, you know, interns end up doing coffee runs and filing for their manager, but, you know, we truly want you to make an impact on the business while you're with us. So our interns are gonna be held accountable for their performance. Um, they're also gonna be required to put a business plan together. Um, and execute it throughout their internship. So a lot of great things to keep you involved and engaged. Great, thank you. You can go on to the next slide, Stacy, if you're ready. Yes, I'm ready. Great. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about our career path. Um, our company is strictly unique in that we only promote from within. Um, so here are the opportunities available at Enterprise. Um, obviously, everyone has to start as a management trainee um, and work their way up. And the great thing about that is all of our senior leaders and high-level execs started as a management trainee and worked hard to get to where they're at today. So as I mentioned earlier, um, from management trainee to get to a branch manager role, I would say could take about two to two and a half years. Um, and then you can you know, continue onwards from there on that daily rental path. Um, the other great thing about our company is that we obviously don't just rent cars, we're, we're total transportation solution. So we have so many other different divisions and departments available um, that have opportunities as well. So, you know, you start as a management trainee, right? You get to branch manager, you know, your manager might tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, I think your skill set might be great um, in fleet management, right? Or that might be you raising your hand, you know, to your manager saying, I, you know, I'd like to take my talents over to human resources or talent acquisition, right? And so that's a great thing about our company. You can change careers without having to change companies. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, 15 and a half years later, you know, I'm still with, with the same company and, and I'm still looking to advance within my role. So that's a little bit about, you know, what the uh, career path looks like at Enterprise. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Stacey. So now let's go ahead and um, we can go ahead and open it up to questions. Um, did you have any other suggestions, Lisa? Yeah, I, um, I can go ahead and read some of the questions. Um, and students, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the chat. This is your opportunity to ask Stacy um, any question that you have regarding what we talked about or what she had talked about earlier today, as well as her opportunities. So Stacy, we have a student who um, basically is graduating in fall 21. Are they eligible for internship opportunities? Absolutely. Um, you would be eligible for the summer internship opportunity and we have the position uh, open right now. Perfect. So, uh, sorry, one thing I'd like to, I know Edlin sent a link for you to register with us. Um, if you are interested in the opportunities, please make sure you register on the enterprise site so that I can, because I will be sending a follow-up email today um, with instructions on how to apply. Perfect. And I can go ahead and refresh that link um, just so that everybody who's trickled in can have it as well. Great. Great. Okay. So our next question, how do you align, or it says how to align, how do I align my resume if I'm applying for a completely different role, if my job experiences does not match with the current requirement? I think, did we answer that one earlier? 
Oh, did we? I think, yeah, okay. I think we, we might've touched on it earlier. Oh, we did. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, no, you're fine. Let's see here. Looking through here for some questions. And if someone wants to go ahead and ask Stacy a question, you can go ahead and raise your hand um, if that's probably easier for you and go ahead and unmute yourself, but just feel free to like raise your hand and then we can go ahead and call on you that way. If you would like to ask Stacy a direct question. Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, let's see here. I'm just looking through here. For... Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to the first raise hand. And I'll ask, um, uh, I'm sorry, I, I might be getting this name wrong. Abby Havnav, to oh, just, you. Go ahead some. and ask your question. Thank you. First of all, thank you for your amazing tips. You know, uh, What if like any candidate has like uh, management experience, like past work experience, and also um, can come as a rainmaker and say he can get clients for the company? Will that be an upper edge while applying uh, to your amazing company? Thanks. The management position? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have previous ex experience that could translate well into this role, I think that would definitely give you that competitive edge. Thanks. But like, in, um, it's going to be entry level still, or you can, uh, you have other options just in case. Everyone has to, as I mentioned, um, when kind of going through that career path chart um, in the previous slide, um, everyone has to start as a management trainee um, and then work their way up into the management role. But, you know, one thing that I'd like to highlight is that it really is up to you as to how far and how fast you want to move up. You know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, management trainees are typically in their roles for eight to 15 months. Well, I've seen, you know, people come in with previous management experience that have been really aggressive and wanting to move their career forward quickly. Um, so they become an assistant manager at six or seven months and then branch manager at a year and a half. So um, if you're aggressive and wanting to move your career forward, I mean, you have the opportunity to, you know, move up as, as, as fast as you'd like. Andrew, I'm so sorry. Like, do you support like somebody wants to continue like graduate school also while um, options like, you know, instead of going upper positions and just go for graduate school and still work with the company? Do you support that or not? I mean, it's our positions, you know, are full time um, and we're obviously, you know, training and developing you into becoming, you know, a successful manager within our organization. Um, so if you're obviously your goal is still to become a manager with us, you know, we're we're going to support you with, you know, continuing your education to help you, you know, succeed professionally with us. Um, but as long as your goals are still aligned, you know, if you're going to be taking classes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, oh, Thank you yeah. for your question. Um, so I have a question that's come in, Stacy. Do I have to apply for multiple locations if I'm targeting for a single role? Um, so I would say that that if you do that, that might delay the hiring process, the interview process. Um, you really want to make sure that. I mean, I'll just speak to, you know, our experience, like, you know, there's four of us recruiters here in the Bay Area, and we've had, you know, applicants apply to um, an internship in every city in the Bay Area. And so, you know, we have to take the time to, you know, message the applicant, figure out where they live, right, because we like to place our interns close to the area that they're living in. Um, and so, you know, that might delay the process. So I would just make sure that you apply to one. Okay. Is the management trainee position currently in person? It is, um, you know, just because we, we are a retail business. So everything is done in person. Perfect. That's good to know. Um, we do have another raised hand. Lisa, if you don't mind me taking this yeah, over. Um, I'll ask Raul to unmute. And Raul, you can go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yeah, are the students who are graduating in fall 2021 eligible for the summer internship? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Of course. So uh, for our summer internship, um, 
you know, for the spring internship, we're, we're targeting that we have open right now, we're targeting May 2021 grads. And then for the summer internship, you know, we are targeting um, December 2021 20, grads or, you know, May uh, 22 grads. Great. Thanks so much, Stacey, for that. Uh, Lisa, yeah. do you, we have any other questions in the chat coming in? Um, no, I think a lot of these questions have already been covered. So go ahead and um, call on the raised hands. Oh, right. Sounds good. We have another raised hand. Go ahead and um, Mr. Bagnatar, I think that's sure, the last one. Go ahead. Yes. Good question. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Real quick, uh, my one of my cousin, but he has also a lot of work experience and he uh, wanted to know in the resume, do you need to like, I know one page is very like important. It's like, uh, what do you say? Top notch real, you know, real estate. So can he has to report all his work experience or has to just be the most recent ones and that should be fine. And then in the interview, he can explain down the road, oh, I did this as this in the past. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Um, keep the resume to one page with the most uh, relevant experience up top. Um, and then you don't want to put too much information where it's, you know, going to be hard to read. So that would be my advice. Thank you. Of course. Great. And I see we do have a question in the chat, um, Stacy, on how to go ahead and um, Get the link for available internships. Do you suggest that they sign in with the link that has been provided or how would they go about um, looking for internship openings? Uh, yes, I will be sending a follow-up email um, on Monday. Um, so if you sign in to that link as soon as possible, just so I have your information in the system, you'll get an email from me on Monday with um, not only a link to apply to the internships, um, but the management trainee position as well for any, you know, upcoming May grads that might be interested. Um, and then the other thing is feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you want, you know, to learn a little bit more about, you know, our positions and what we have to offer. I'd be more than happy to do an in informational session one-on-one uh, -on -one with you. So um, please link, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Thanks, Stacy. I do see some um, another question in the chat. How many would you say um, typically do you or the hiring volume of um, enterprise holdings is for the management tra trainee positions? We actually have the management trainee position always available just because our from due to our promote from within culture or constantly promoting people to the next level to assistant managers and branch managers we're always needing to you know backfill those promotions with new hires that's why we always have the management trainee role open um and right now i i mean i can speak to my territory um we're looking for about you know three people right now across our south bay locations um in monterey and santa cruz county we're looking for about two um, and then in Fremont, we're looking for about one, but I know at other locations in the Bay Area, they are actively hiring as well. Um, so you'll see the openings in each city with, with the link that I send you all. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Stacey. All right, so our next question is gonna be from Varun and I'm gonna go ahead and ask him to unmute him or her. Um, and you can go ahead and ask your question, Varun. Oh. <laughs> he did pop it into the chat. It's a general question. How do we apply for the internships? But I'm assuming it's going to be that same um, link that you're going to be providing with the follow-up email, correct? Correct. But if you would mm. love to apply today, um, you know, our career site is uh, careers.enterprise.com. Um, and then, you know, you can look up the internship opportunities and apply, but I will for sure be sending uh, a follow-up email on Monday. Great, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and go to our next raised hand. So it's um, Wesam. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you so much for all the tips. Um, it was great. Um, my question is, so I graduate in fall of 2022. Would I be eligible to um, apply for the internship for the summer or any ones that comes up? So if you're going to be graduating in fall of 2022, to, um, 
you wouldn't qualify for this summer internship. The great thing is that um, we do offer internships year round. Um, so you can uh, look into the you know, fall internship uh, or winter and spring internship if you wanna get your foot in the door. Um, the other piece of advice I give for people who want to you know, kind of learn more about our business and gain experience is we do have you know, CS uh, customer service opportunities at the, our San Jose airport. Um, and I do hire for that location. So if you wanna you know, get an understanding of the business and get your foot in the door, We've had, you know, freshmen and sophomores um, get hired as customer service reps. And then once they hit their junior, senior year, transition into the internship. So um, that could be a way for you to get in and, you know, get an understanding of the business and get some experience under your belt. Great. Thank and you. I think we might have time for um, one more question. Lisa, is there anything that I've missed? Um, coming through in the chat or any questions that have gone unanswered? Uh, let's see. No, there's not another question in the chat. Uh, one thing I just want to remind students or just let students know that um, we would love to hear from you about today's event. And if you'd like to see more of these events to please um, go to this particular link and um, just let us know how today went. And if you would like to see more of these Employer Insights uh, events, thank you. So go ahead and go on to the next question. Yeah, okay, Varun still um, is asking a few questions. Um, is there um, any internships for any mathematics related um, interns? Unfortunately, um, you know, our internships are really customer service and sales focused. Um, I did see a, a question earlier about um, accounting internships, and I kind of wanted to touch on that because yeah. uh, we do have a, a business management um, department um, where, you know, we hire entry level staff accountants um, that can have a career path into becoming, you know, a controller or VP of finance. Um, ideally, we like to hire them as management trainees first so that they can get a little bit of an understanding of, you know, the ins and outs of our business before transitioning into accounting. Um, but we have hired for the staff accountant position externally. And with that, we do um, offer accounting internships throughout the summer. So if anyone's a finance or accounting major, um, we do have those types of internships, internship opportunities. And for that position, I mean, pre-COVID, our accountants were working in, uh, were housed in our regional offices. Um, and as of right now that, you know, that, that is a work from home. So that's another opportunity I, you know, I forgot to share earlier. Great, thanks Stacey. It looks like there are still students asking for that direct link to your careers page. If you wouldn't mind providing that uh, to me so I can type it out and pop it into the chat, Stacey, yeah. one more time. Let me, um, do you want me to put it in right now? Yes, please, if you can, because I know there are a few, a few um, students wanting to have that direct link right in the chat. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stacy, for providing um, that link. And if there, oh, I do see we have one raised hand. There's about two minutes left to our employer insights. I'm gonna go ahead and ask uh, um, them to unmute and go ahead and ask your question. Okay, um, hello. Um, can you give me, can you provide the link, um, HTTP uh, colon slash slash bit dot lee dot SSJ su sugenic in the chat? So yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. And we would really appreciate everyone's feedback. Um, so we can keep on providing these employer insights events. Um, so the link has been provided in the chat and I wanna take the time to really thank Stacy um, for the, a great presentation and a great employer insights with the SJC Career Center. Um, so much for having me today. It was a pleasure meeting with you all. I wish it was in person, but <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, gonna have to get used to this virtual platform for a little longer. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for being here, Stacy. And thank you so much students for being here and asking really um, great questions. Um, and I believe Stacy, uh, you're gonna be at the career fair next week, right? On Tuesday? 
I will be there on Tuesday. Um, so feel free to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session with me. I have um, our other talent acquisition professionals that are gonna be helping with one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. So um, please uh, schedule one and, and we can talk more about your qualifications and also provide you with more detail on, on the position. So thank That's you so great. much. Thank you. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so check out the career fair for next week. Look for Enterprise, sign up for the one-on-one -on -one sessions and uh, sign up with Stacy if you'd like to talk to her. Yeah. Okay. So, thank yeah. Thank you, okay. Stacey. Well, Hi, May. Did you have a question? I'll stay on. <laughs> Thanks, Stacey. Oh, no. I really appreciate it. No, I just want to say I did have an interview with her like a few weeks ago. And now I wish I have a chance to like listen to her like today before. <laughs> well, you did great in the interview, Mai. So nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> Yay, we love to see these types of connections, especially coming through on our employer insights. It's wonderful to see. Mai, thank you so much for sharing. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Mai. Thank you. And thanks to everybody for attending the event. Um, it is now concluded. And if anybody would like a copy of this, it's going to be uploaded to our YouTube, um, the SJSU Career Center YouTube. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks again, Stacy. Oh, I appreciate it. Take care. Take care, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.